Hello, everyone, and welcome. This is Professor Thera here with you to talk about getting started with running parallel programs using your GPU with Python. So let us get started. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. So that you can see what we're doing. And what I wanted to show you today is how you can make a little test program and how you can um, just get started with um, running things on your GPU. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just run the program and then we will go back through and analyze what is going on here. So the idea is that running your code on your GPU should be quite a lot faster because it should be optimized for running things in parallel, whereas running things on your CPU um, would be quite a bit slower. And so uh, here you can see that I am working with um, with Spider from the Anaconda package. And here I have just executed some code to do a simple little task. And we see that in fact, in fact, actually our GPU is taking slightly longer this time around. It's gonna make a liar out of me. All right, here our GPU is slightly faster. We'll talk about why <clears throat> why that might happen as well. All right, so this is what we're gonna do. We want to see how we can actually write our code in order to make it actually run on a CPU and how to make it run on the GPU as well. So working here in the Anaconda package, um, there's a couple of things you wanna make sure that you have installed before you get started. So you see that I am using um, from Numba import uh, JIT for just in time. So we need to install that. Now I'm not explicitly using the CUDA toolkit today, um, but that is something that you'll want to have if you're going to be working with your parallel code. So it would be a good idea for you to go ahead and um, download that and install that as well. So when you uh, open your Anaconda Navigator, which you'll have once you have installed um, the the package, the uh, Anaconda package on your computer, you can go ahead and launch your IPython module just like this, and you will get uh, your Jupyter QT console just like this. And this is where you do your installations from. So in fact, I've actually already installed these packages. So it's probably going to tell me that, but you would just do something like pip install uh, Noconda. Still Numba, just like this. And it's probably going to tell me that I've already got it. So we see it's uh, attempting to do this. And uh, it says that I have uh, already installed it. And we would do the same for conda install Ruda toolkit. So you'll have that. That will be very useful for running the, um, the toolkit in your environment. All right, so that's, this is what you would, um, this is what you would do and you would see it actually installing your package um, if you uh, do this. All right, so now that you have that all set, um, you may also wish to check out um, whether or not you have a GPU on your machine. So that would also be something important that you want to do. Now, this is just a terminal from my um, computer. And what I have done is I have issued this command lspci, and then I have grepped VGA. And when we do this, it is going to tell me about the VGA compatible controllers. And we see that in fact, I have an NVIDIA GPU, the Quadro T2000 Mobile Edition. This is a laptop um, in, that is available hardware on this machine. So you want to just make sure that you have some kind of a GPU available and that your system is correctly seeing that before we get started. All right. Now, once you've got all of those things out of the way, then we want to make some 
practice code to see um, if we can in fact actually run the GPU. And that's what we have over here, which we started out with running. So I just have some comments up here. I'm running this in Python 3. Um, so now I'm going to import this uh, JIT. Now this is gonna be in fact a decorator that is going to be useful for sending our job to the GPU instead of running it on the CPU. So what we're also going to want to do is we're also going to want to run a timer. So that's how I got the times. How long did it take to run these things on the CPU versus on the GPU? So I'm also going, so this is just part of the, uh, the Python, the standard Python library that ships right with the Python. So I can just um, import the default timer as timer which is all we're really going to need to do this. So next thing we're gonna do is let's just make a simple little function that is going to run on the CPU and then we'll run the same one on the GPU and find out which one takes longer. So this is a very simple function. Um, this is a function called FUNC func and it takes an input variable called n. We have an empty accumulator and an index being set equal to zero. So while the index is less than n, the number that we sent in, I am going to append i to the accumulator and then I'll increment i by one. So you see that basically what it's gonna do is it's going to operate as many times as I have picked here and it's going to append that index number. So basically it's gonna count up to 100 or whatever number we give it. And those numbers should then be appended into the accumulator and then it returns the accumulator. So this is our normal function um, and so it might be a little bit surprising to you to see that in fact, actually setting up the corresponding function to run on the GPO, GPU is really uh, quite similar. So here, what we have is we have our decorator. Now remember the decorators basically take a function as input and they are, which will be the function that is underneath them. And it is going to basically be a wrapper for that function. So what this decorator is going to do is it is going to take function two and it is going to optimize it for executing it on the GPU. So when we call this function, it will optimize it and then that's how it will actually get run on the GPU. So notice that the function itself is really pretty much the same, just the name is different, func2, but it has the same accumulator, the same index, same while loop, it's doing the same task and it also returns an accumulator. So that's it for the code um, in the um, in the uh, in, in running these two the running this test, um, what we're going to do here is we're going to set up a little section of if we run this uh, if we run this function that is going to in fact um, execute these two in order to do the test. So this if name double underscore name equals main, this means that if we import it that it doesn't execute it already. Um, but if we have it like this and we run this particular script by pressing our run button up here, that this will execute under those conditions. So what I have done is I have set up my n, and let me just do this to see exactly how many zeros I have here. So I have 10,000 um, set up is my n. So you might remember that our input variable for our functions um, also will um, take this will take this number, which we will see when we do our function calls. It doesn't matter that this says n and this says a. That's uh, inconsequential. Oh, actually, it's not inconsequential. Stop. <laughs> 